Hi and welcome to the 20th and last stage of this year's Tour de France. We are now in Longemo because the train has brought the riders to the edge of Paris. And the riders will now face 102.5 kilometers with hard and cozy racing. Because it's the final day of racing in this year's Tour de France, they will celebrate with a lot of champagne and uh, posing for the cameras before they hit the Champs-Élysées. Because then it's game on, then it's the first man to the finish line. My name is Dick Anderson and for the last time in this year's Tour de France edition, by my side are expert commentator Jim Jones. Good morning. Yeah, good morning to you too, uh, Jim. And uh, we had a untraditional breakaway uh, pretty early on this stage. And uh, among them was Jussi Weikanen from Francais de Jeux, who has, uh, seems to be in every breakaway this year. Yeah, and uh, Ivan Basso uh, joined him. Yeah, Ivan Basso uh, probably just wanted to get some fame because he's not in the podium. And here we can see the riders entering the Champs-Élysées. We're now ending our recap footage and tuning in live on today's stage of this year's Tour de France. Stay tuned and go live! Hi and welcome back! We got 35 kilometers left of racing and the breakaway is still holding off from the peloton. And right off the bat we are going to hit it off with a viewer's question. It's from DJP19 the, the Canadian. Well that's not actually his nickname, he's just from Canada, so <laughs> yes. And uh, he wants to know, the Jean Elysees is a historic place and a great place to win. Who do you think will come out on top in the sprint? And uh, Jim, I think... Um, that's, that question is best suited for you, so you will get to answer that one. Well, I think uh, Cavendish or maybe Tor Hushovd will uh, take this one because they've uh, won this stage before. So you think that uh, experience on a, such a huge ar arena like Champs-Élysées is, uh, is a key element? Yeah, and you have to be uh, in top five uh, on the last corner there to, uh, to have a chance to win the stage. Yeah, so experience and position is key, actually. Yeah. But you got also got the Italian Daniel Benatti. He al has also won an, on Champs-Élysées. Do you think he have, have a sh has a chance today? Um, perhaps. It depends on how, how his, his position is. Yeah, because his team has, hasn't been that good this year. So uh, No, they have struggled. That's, that's, that's correct. And we can see that the breakaway has been caught and... Uh, it's all fair and square. Yes, it is. And do you think we will see another breakaway or do you think that they will just uh, control this into the finish line? Because it has been a really tough Tour de France this year. Yeah, and I don't think uh, if uh, too many attack, I don't think the peloton will manage to keep it together, actually. But, yeah, but a lot of teams still got all of their nine riders, uh, surprisingly. Like Cervelo, Test Team, they got all of their nine. Uh, as uh, Astana also got uh, all of their nine. And... Um, we have had a lot of questions about who is the Latin Rouge this year. And uh, I want you to answer that one. Who is Latin Rouge? The Norwegian rider, Alexander Kristoff. He's uh, lost in this year's tour. Yes, 149th place, over two hours behind Alberto Contador. And for the, for the record, he is riding for BMC. And about Contador, he managed to uh, keep Armstrong away on uh, yesterday's stage. Yeah, he managed to gain some time actually on uh, Lance Armstrong, who is now 1 minute and 9 seconds behind uh, Contador. And Alejandro Valverde is um, third, 3 minutes and 49 seconds behind. And uh, Jim, what are your feelings uh, about this Tour de France? Well, what can I say? The first week was um, actually a bit boring. It was just uh, ending in mass sprints all the time and... Um, then they hit the uh, mountains, the Alps, and uh, there were r not really a, some big uh, time differentials there in, uh, in the Alps. But uh, then they hit the Pyrenees, and uh, things started to happen. But um, I must say, it's been really close so far, and uh, I'm, I'm really excited about uh, this uh, steak I'm having uh, tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Celebrating with some uh, wine and... <laughs> <laughs> so you're not excited about um, Contador? Mm, not really. <laughs> you're not really that. Okay. Here we can see that uh, producers are trying to test out um, the camera angle they are going to use in the sprint. It's a tradition. And this is not a tradition. <laughs> <laughs> this is a black screen. But we're hoping that we're tuning... Yeah, they're tuning back in. Yes, we are. And um, it's not uh, far, uh, far off to the sprint now, as we can see the Triumph... 
<laughs> bridge is that the name in English? <laughs> no, it's the uh, freedom of uh, triumph. Freedom of triumph. No, it's a uh, gas station. <laughs> it's a gas station. <laughs> yeah, it's just a huge roof. Now, but let's get serious, Jim. Here we can see um, the streets of Champs Elysees with a uh, huge attendance this year. Uh, everybody's just pushing uh, over the rails, trying to get a glimpse of the riders as they pass by in uh, incredible speed. We are now on the final lap of this year's Tour de France on Champs Elysees, and after this turn, it's as Jim said earlier on this broadcast, position is key. If you're not in the top five, you cannot win. So here we can see all the sprinters' teams are fighting it out in the front of the peloton, trying to get the best position into the last turn. In Italian or Spanish, the ultimate curve. All the main sprinters are there. Hushovd, Cavendish, Benatti, Frere, everybody's there, even Edvald Bosenhagen. Yeah, and Tyler Frere, the American, riding for Garmin as we are getting closer and closer to the final turn. Now we will see who is the best of the gladiators. Your your final tip uh, right before the corner? Cavendish. Cavendish, okay, mine goes to Oscar Frere. He has been strong. And now we and now we are going around the left turn. We can see a Tor Huso with Mark Cavendish on his wheel in excellent position. And there we can see them riding on along the Champs Lisse. And it's McEwen. No, there goes Benatti. He's opening first and he's coming really strong. And there is Tor Huso countering with Mark Cavendish on his wheel. And Tyler Fair and Oscar Ferrer is behind there. And Tor Huso looks really strong. But here comes Mark Cavendish. Will he manage to beat the Norwegian at the final line on Champs Lisse? No, it's the Norwegian, the god of thunder. Tor Huso took it here on Champs Lisse. As we can see that. I'll Alberto Contador has won the Tour de France and just passed the finish line. And Oscar Freire came third and then it's Tyler Freire yeah, in fourth. And, and was the... it um, McEwen in fifth? Yeah, I guess so. We can see it on the replay uh, yeah, coming up now. Let's get the replay. There we got it. It was yeah. an excellent sprint from yeah, Torre Yeah, you can see that uh, Benatti should advance on the left-hand side there. And there goes Torre Husso uh, with a really high pace. Powerful timing, perfect timing. Yeah, uh, it was uh, explosive as well. And um, Mark Cavendish couldn't beat them as we can see Tyler Ferrer and uh, Oscar Ferrer is just left in the dust. Yeah, fighting for the third place. And there it was, Torre Husso, and it was Tyler Ferrer in fifth and Benatti in fourth. But this is the man of the day, Torre Husso in the picture. Yes, he's also won the green points jersey this year, and uh, he's just embracing the the applaud he's getting from the from the crowd. It's been an uh, exciting Tour de France this year, don't you think? Yeah, and uh, we have to add, he's uh, had the most stage wins. Yes, he has. France. He has been dominating uh, among the sprinters as uh, Contador is really celebrating his uh, overall uh, victory, and. Um, well, Lance Armstrong didn't actually have a chance when it comes to the time trial. No, but uh, he did give him some really good competitions. Yeah, in, uh, he was the only one. Uh, yeah, he was the only one that was able to give him that competition. As we can see, that Alejandro Valverde is over three minutes behind, and Tor Husov dominated the points uh, rankings, and um, yeah, actually a climber behind him. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> well, that's cycling for you. And you can also see that there's uh, another uh, Norwegian rider there coming, uh, young coming, coming yeah, upcoming star, Advil Bosnagen. As we can see, Andy Schleck yeah, embracing the celebrations he's getting from uh, the crowd as winning the King of the Mountain jersey. King of the Mountain jersey, or uh, the polka dot jersey, whatever <laughs> Yeah, prefer. whatever you prefer. And he's also winning the youth classification. But unfortunately, this year's Tour de France has come to an end. And for the last time of this year's Tour de France, I have been Dick Anderson. Alongside me was our expert commentator, Jim Jones. And for the record, Radio Shack was the best team. Arriva Deci! And we hope that you tune back in next year. Will it be a next year? <laughs> of course it will be a next year, unless we get fired. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> uh, I have kids, you know. I have kids. <laughs> and welcome to the 20th stage of this year's Tour de France. We are now in Longemont because the train has brought the riders to the edge of Paris before they will brain themselves on the 111. <laughs> Jones. Hello, and uh, Dick, what has happened so far? Well, uh, we, uh, as always, had a breakaway. Um, and then, uh, in the ultimate curve. Hey, can you do something? One kilometer, one kilometer. One kilometer, one kilometer.